What's going on guys? Welcome back to Goder Fighting Secrets, YouTube's premier channel for everything World War II combatives and self-preservation related. So today what we're going to be doing is taking things a little bit more to the modern times that we live in. What's going on guys? She's trying to steal the limelight from me. <laughs> well, I've been gone for so long. Oh, I don't care. Hey, what's going on guys? So um, we're looking at this bear hug from behind. Now, why is this relevant? Why is it so important? Why did I choose this of all freaking things? to show you guys. Well, because this is a very common thing that we see. So a lot of the times what's gonna happen is um, maybe I get into it with someone at the bar, right? One-on-one, -on -one, hey, you're da 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 blah, 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 right? Fill in the gaps with your imagination. I'm not paying attention and all of a sudden his buddy comes from behind, oh, and they get me and they can actually pick me up and dump me like this. So this is very crucial. This is something that we really need to be defeating as soon as we possibly can. It's not simply the type of thing, like a lot of coaches out there will tell you about, well, you're walking down the alley and they get you and they can drag you like that, right? Well, they can drag you, okay? That's obvious. But another thing that they can do is pick you up and dump you on your freaking head, right? You can imagine if I'm like a 280 pound dude and I'm, you know, sitting there and I see a 180 pound dude talking smack to my buddy, I pick him up, I dump him on his head on the concrete or on the barroom floor, okay, over and out and done with right away. So your first mistake in this whole situation is assuming the guy's alone. Generally speaking, guys are too much of a coward to, to, to talk smack one-on-one, -on -one, right? Especially if it's that dude that we all have run into where, ah, uh, ba 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 ba, he's always gonna have a buddy around or at least you should assume that, right? That's your first mistake. Second mistake would be talking to him, getting target fixated on him and not checking your six o'clock every so often. Now you gotta be careful because obviously if you're talking with him and you check your six o'clock, what do you think is gonna happen? It'll right, right. Ah, yeah. next thing you know. So it could be you know pertinent and relevant to go ahead and just change angles every now and again and just keep this in your peripheral vision. Especially if it's a crowded bar or anything like that. Guys, you're better off being the larger man or the bigger man and trying to walk away and de-escalate the situation. But if anything ever does happen, this is what we're gonna be looking at. So first thing, I come up behind Jen and it's gonna be a big surprise, all right? So it's not gonna be the type of thing where it's friendly and I'm like, <laughs> friendly coming like this. If it is, you're in the wrong type of bar, all right? So first of all, I want you to be aware that when this happens, it's gonna be like a what the f Pardon my language. So, um, I really need you to be aware and watch what I did when I said that. It's gonna be a what? What? Get out of my shot! <laughs> it's, look at my reaction though when that happened, okay? This is what the Israelis call a fright reaction. When I was training uh, with the Israelis over there in Israel on the West Bank, they talked heavily about this and this was heavily taught in their combative system. It was a method of shooting but the same methodology applies for what we're doing here, unarmed combatants. This is a fright reaction. Notice what happens to my base, guys. My knees, they get bent. I sit low to the ground. My stance widens. I get low. I get a good, what, base. Now, for you guys who've wrestled out there or even done grappling, you know, jiu-jitsu, maybe even some judo, what does this kind of resemble? Kind of a, a bad wrestling stance, right? That's exactly what it is. And that's exactly what you're gonna see a lot of jujitsu guys do. Strict jujitsu guys is a bad wrestling stance, right? And why is that? Well, when I grab her up from behind and I want you to go ahead and just give me the fright reaction. <laughs> All right, so now what is she doing? She's making it very difficult for me to pick her up and slam her. Now, even if I'm a lot stronger than her, when she widens her base like that. Like an anchor. Just like an anchor, exactly. You guys see an anchor, well, I can't. I don't want to impress you too much now, but if you guys have seen um, an anchor like that, right? And that's exactly what we're doing. We're anchoring ourselves to the earth so that they can't pick us up. And, you know, obviously, guys, there are some stereo freaks out there that it's not going to matter. But I want to give you the best fighting chance possible. And out of everything that I could be showing you, this is going to give you the best fighting chance possible against all different types of individuals. So first thing. She feels it, she gets surprised, great reaction, all right? Now look what is happening with her arms. They're out, they're protected, her elbows are wide. She is difficult to move, all right? And usually she's very petite, I can throw her around like a rag doll, but I'm telling you guys honestly right now, it's 
really difficult to move her like this. Now the next thing that she's gonna wanna do is start placing her hands on top of mine. All right, just like that. Okay, recover. So that's first. We're gonna break this down in the typical fashion that we break down military combatives. One, two, three, four, etc. Mm. So one, fright reaction. Two, hands on top of mine, all right? Now I want you to notice the orientation of her hands. Keep them just like that. This is her left hand. It's sitting on top of my hands. Whatever hand is on top, that's the direction she's going to need to move. So yes. So I want you to go ahead and switch up your hands real quick. Give me right on right, good. Mm -hmm. Now what she's gonna do is press straight down with her hands. Straight down, straight down. Yeah, exactly. Just like for you guys who work out, recover. Just like for you guys who work out at the gym, you're doing the tricep pull downs like this. Yeah, we're doing the same it. thing, mm -hmm. except we're also utilizing our body weight. Now we're already in a based off stance, but we're also gonna be squatting down a little bit and push. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who it is, nine times out of 10, or at least eight times out of 10, this is going to work because we're not using force against a bicep. We're not using force against a chest muscle. We're using force against the top of somebody's hand. Mm. All of our force is going directly into where? Just the top of their hands. All we're doing is aiming to break their grip. Nothing else, okay? So that's gonna be two. So one, front reaction. Two, hands, good. Now three is press, press, press. All right, we've broken the grip. We're gonna come back a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. One, fight reaction, two, press, grip, good, that's three. All right, now four, she's gonna turn to her right side, face me. Notice what she's doing, she's gonna wanna take this hand, give me an overhook, that's an underhook, give me an overhook. There you go, no, I, I was wrong, that's an overhook. Uh, I'm right usually, but you know, I'm a man, I can admit it. All right, now what she's gonna do is give me a tiger strike right to the chin. Ah, now knee to the balls. Oh. All right, so that's four. That's our fourth and final kind of um, number that we're gonna be talking about here is go ahead and go on the attack, mm -hmm. utilize close combat to destroy the enemy's will to fight. That's exactly what that's gonna do. Boom, mm -hmm. boom. And again, very Fairburn, very Applegate, but that's how we do over here. What's the name of the channel? Daughter Fighting Secret. <laughs> I'm glad you reminded the guys out there because they were starting to think this was crazy combatives. No, this is Gutter Fighting Secrets, guys. So whatever we do, we're going to throw that World War II combatives flavor on here. Again, we know that stuff works. We know Gracie combatives works. We know it works well. Mm -hmm. but we also know that destroying the enemy's will to fight with close combat is what gutter fighting is all about. And we're going to do exactly that. So, one, all right, base out. Good, freight react. I start dragging her back. She knows this is not going anywhere good. Break the grip. Turn into me. Boom. Oh. And then I fall back. And then she I run. <laughs> goes, goes, goes. All right, guys, we're gonna do that one more time. We're gonna give you a side angle this time. Make our profiles a little better. All right. Yeah. All right, All right guys, so one. Break the grip. Oh, yeah, go break. Turns into me. Overhook, overhook, boom, all right, and then what? She runs and gets the hell out of there. Now she can either run, get the hell out of there, or she's really feeling uh, quite- it's soft and gonna make you pay. Well, we can't curse with these videos, so I'm gonna have to delete that, or bleep it out. Just leave it up, man. See what I put up with, guys. Oh, no! All right. I, unfortunately, I've been training her like this, and now I really have to wash my ass. Oh, no! <laughs> Don't worry about it, guys. All right, listen. So, I hope you found that um, useful. I hope you found that helpful. So, step one, fright reaction. Step two, go ahead and start destroying that grip. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and utilize your body momentum, body weight. Break that grip. Once that grip's come off, I've been saying the word overhook. This is not immediately apparent to everybody. What is an overhook? Show them what an overhook is. So this is the over yeah. to control. This is the under. Under, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So guys out there who wrestle, you might be uh, familiar with pummeling. You guys know what overhooks, underhooks mean, but for those of you who don't, mm -hmm. overhook is over. Under is always under the armpit. Mm -hmm. We don't want that in this one. Under the armpit would be good for the shoulder lock mm -hmm. and things like that, but the overhook is always good for a follow-up chin strike 
and knee to the balls. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I want you to be cognizant and cautious out there these days. There is a lot going on. Don't get caught unawares. Please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And don't be scared, be prepared. You heard the girl.